Corporal J. Powell, 1st Battalion, Royal War, Russia, Austria. 1943. Well, wow, that's incredible. This is the Zeiss Icon Letter 6x9 medium format camera. I'm going to take you through all the different functions in this camera so you can start shooting wonderful, super large size negatives on medium format. To open up this camera, all you have to do is push this button at the top and make sure your hand is across the front so that the bellows don't just pop open. These cameras can be up to 70 or 80 years old, so just make sure that you're treating it gently and then that way you'll get to use it for a long time as well. Almost all the controls can be found at the front of the camera. This is the distance between you and your subject, the shutter speed control, as well as the aperture priority control as well. To set the distance between you and the subject, all you have to do is rotate this like so until you find the desired distance between you and your subject. This is really important, this is measured in feet, so make sure that if you're shooting somebody, a person or your pet, for example, make sure you measure the distance between you and them, otherwise it will be defocused and it's not going to be helpful for you. Alternatively, if you're shooting landscapes, stick it straight onto infinity mode and you'll be good to go. The shutter priority mode is quite simple. Again, you'll find there's a dial over here. All you have to do is rotate this dial. Find the right shutter speed for you. This ranges between 20, 1 25th of a second all the way through 200th of a second, which covers most grounds if you're shooting on film. So that's pretty straightforward. And then to change the aperture, again, at the top, you have this little triangular thing here that you have to pull across. This goes from f6.3 all the way to f32. So if you really want to close that aperture down in very bright sunny conditions, then you can do so. To get the camera ready for the next shot, once you have all the dials set in, then you're ready to shoot. You can just pull on this lever here, like so. Then you have two options to release the shutter. One, which is the wonderful leaf mechanism here. This means that you can hold it handheld and shoot in low light conditions without it kind of shaking like mad. So that's one release. You can just let go from here, like so. Alternatively, you can press this button at the top here on the left hand side. It does the same job as well. So whichever you're more comfortable with, go for that option. I really recommend if you're shooting in low light conditions or you're shooting outdoors that requires a perfect shot, I would mount this on a tripod and then I'd shoot with a shutter release cable. You can get one of these pretty cheaply online, but it looks something like this. This is my favorite one. You can just plug this in to the camera in this socket here. It will just dive right on in like so. And once you've got that ready, you've got your camera lined up for your shot, then you can just depress this and it will release the shutter. Obviously you need to cock the mechanism and then that works perfectly as well. Always have one of these if you're shooting on film. You never know when these will come in handy for you. Let's go ahead and look at some of the other components on this camera. So I'm just going to close this. The way you close the camera is by holding the two sides down to press them gently and then pull slightly on those silver levers there and then gently put the camera back together until it shuts like so. At the top of the camera you have a coal shoe so you can't really use flash unless of course you're using a cable of some sort and then you've got the dial to put on the film. And that's pretty much it, besides the opening of the camera from here and the shutter release mechanism here. Turning to the back of the camera, you've got the window gate here, which you can open up to let you know what frame you're on, which is very, very handy. At the bottom of the camera, nothing major, just a tripod mount that will come in use for you. To open up the film back, all you have to do is just pull on this bit here very gently, and then it will slightly open, and you can just pull that apart like so. And there you have it. Make sure that you've got a spare spool for you to kind of load your film onto and your actual film will go in here on the right hand side of the camera. To load the film on you're going to have to pull down on this little bit here, pop your film in like so and this is pretty straightforward to do and it will snugly fit into the camera itself. Drag your film across, make sure that it's into the splice and the spool on the other side. Then all you have to do is rotate clockwise at the top here Now make sure that you have tightened this in very carefully because this can be a little bit finicky all right and make sure that it's caught on so i'll try again pop that in like so and just give it that additional support that it needs to capture on the frame itself you might need to push this along a little bit sometimes just to give that gentle nudge just hold this bit down so that that can tighten on there and then you'll find that slowly it will start to move across now this is a medium format film that you can use and then you just keep going now on a six by nine camera you're going to get eight frames in total you've got your film i always like to line up the arrows with the viewfinder in the middle there you have it 
it's all lined up there. And once that's done, go ahead and close that there. Now that will close shut. You'll hear the little thud. And now you can just focus on the window gate. Just keep scrolling until you get to frame number one. You're gonna go through some sundials until you get to the first one. Just be careful when you are winding on this film because it is very easy to skip frame number one. And there you have it. That's frame number one. Now you're ready to shoot. Once you're framed up, you've got frame number one there. You can go ahead and close that or leave it open. It's up to you really what you do with that. You've got backing on there. Some people like to close the shutter gate at the back the window gate even like so you can do so or if you want to leave it open that's perfectly fine too then just open up your camera gently set your aperture and your shutter speed the distance between you and your subject very carefully once you've got that all under control pull the shuttercock here like so then go ahead shoot so remember the shutter is on the left hand side or you can use the leaf at the bottom when you're done my suggestion to sort of abundance of precaution is just to pull that close and rotate onto the next frame once you've shot your eighth frame that will be the end of the roll so just carefully wind it completely off at the end and you'll hear it a little squeaking right that will be it just extra careful just do some extra spins at the top and then you're good to release it same process again you just lift this tab here up lightly pull across and there you have it you've got your film you can just depress this down pull this out like so and then your film is gone before you shut it close pull this ball across so then you are ready to shoot your next roll film on this camera and you can go ahead pop that down close and you are set. The Zeiss Icon Netta 6x9 medium format camera is a wonderfully designed camera. If you want the largest negative size that you can get on medium format, 6x9 is the way to go. It is an incredibly cost effective way of doing super large medium format photography. You will get this camera for about 20 to 30 pounds online. Generally, traditionally, they've been really well kept. So make sure that you get one with bellows which are really clean and you've got clear lens. You'll be good to go for a long time. Crucially, this camera is the most budget friendly in comparison to the most popular one which is the Fuji GSW range which will cost you upwards of seven eight hundred or nine hundred pounds if you want to get started on medium format and you want to get super large negatives then this could be a really cost effective way to do so particularly if you're a hobbyist photographer this will be perfect my suggestion would be to shoot landscape and urban scapes with it, put it on infinity mode and you're good to go. Although you can shoot portraits with it, but you're gonna to have to be very, very careful. Make sure that you measure the distances between you and your subject carefully. By default, six by nine cameras have traditionally been used for fashion photography and portrait work. Why not use it for that too? The only condition might be how well the lens has been kept, how well the bellows have been kept and how good the quality images will be. My suggestion would be to start off by using film stock such as black and white ones Ilford do some fantastic black and white film in particular although you might want to try other color negative films too slide film might be a little bit more tricky to shoot on this but with practice it is certainly possible too I hope you found this video really helpful in getting started with this ice icon meta 6x9 camera it's a wonderful piece of kit which very few people know about you can certainly start shooting much larger medium format negatives in a very short period of time let me know in the comments below if you have shot with us before I'd love to hear from you otherwise make sure you hit the subscribe button and I'll see you on the next video.